everyone, my name is Logan, welcome back to the lecture hall. Today we're continuing our UCI Math 2A course um, of single variable calculus and we're doing section 3.6, derivatives of log functions. And we start with this equation. It states the derivative of log bx is equal to 1 over x ln b. And maybe a few of you are like, well how do we get that? Well, we have to implicitly differentiate. So, but do we implicitly, where, how do we implicitly differentiate this? This is already in the form y equals log bx. Well, y equals log bx is equivalent to saying x is equal to b to the y. Why is this? It's because exponentials are the inverses of logs. Okay, so then we get our thing that states x is equal to by, and we differentiate term by term. After that, after that, we get that the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of b to the y is going to be equal to b to the y ln b times y prime. After that, we solve for y prime by dividing out this b to the y ln b, divide out this b to the y ln b on both sides, and what do we get? We get y prime is equal to 1 over b to the y ln b. And this is equal to 1 over x ln b. And you're like, wait, how is that equal to 1 over x ln b? Well, we know that b to the y is equal to x. So then we see this b to the y, and we're like, oh, we can replace that with x. And then this proves our statement that we had before. So, from this property, we get a few um, pretty nice results. The first one, we get d dx of ln of x is equal to 1 over x. And you're like, wait a second, that seems way too easy. Um, and then we just do it, and we know that d dx of ln of x is equal to d dx of log e um, of x, and we know that this will be 1 over x ln of e, and we know ln of e is equal to 1, and so then we get it's just equal to 1 over x times 1, which is just equal to 1 over x. And then now this property, um, we will need in math 2b. That is our second part of the uh, single variable calculus course. That is basically all integrals. And we need to know that the derivative of ln of the absolute value of x is also equal to 1 over x. So just pocket that away in your head, and then you're going to have to like pull it out in, you know, maybe chapter 6 of um, Math 2B. Um, finally, another great property that comes out of this is our general chain rule. It states d dx of ln of g of x is equal to 1 over g of x times g prime of x. And this is all resting on the fact that g of x can be differentiated, of course. So, from this we get something very, very nice. We get this little thing called logarithmic differentiation. Um, and then we see this function. We see y equals x to the 4 thirds times the square root of x to the 4th plus x cubed all over 1 plus x squared squared. That's ugly. Disgusting. Terrible. Awful. Any other word, synonym for bad, bad uh, gross function. This is a bad function. Because why is it bad? Well, we would have to do multiple product rules and a quotient and possibly multiple quotient rules in order to solve this. But because of our new property, we can do it faster. We can do it in a much easier manner. And what do, what do I mean by this? Well, this is equivalent if we just take ln of both sides. If we take ln of y is equal to ln of x to the 4 thirds times, I'm just going to write it out, x to the 4 plus x cubed over 1 plus x squared squared. Right? These are the same because you're just taking ln of both sides and you can do that. And then what we can do is we can split it up using the laws of logs. Every time there's a multiplication, that turns into the addition of two logs. And every time there's a division inside of a log, that turns into a subtraction of two logs. So I'm going to do that all in one step, and we get ln y is equal to ln x to the 4 thirds 
plus ln uh, x to the fourth plus x cubed. Um, this is to the one half power. Why do I say one half power? Because the square root um, minus ln of one plus x squared squared. Okay, perfect, but now we still have to differentiate. And then we see that we have this ln of y. So we are going to have to do some implicit differentiation, which is unfortunate. But it's not that hard. So now we just do it term by term, d dx of all of them. And what do we get? Well, we get what's the derivative of y? It's going to be 1 over y times y prime is equal to, well, derivative of this, we know from our general chain rule, that it's just going to be the function, like 1 over the function, x to the 4 thirds, times the derivative of said function. So what's the derivative of this? It's power rule, so the 4 thirds comes out in front, times x to the 1 third. Now we keep going, we get plus ln of uh, blah blah blah, of this ugly thing, 1 over square root x to the 4 plus x cubed. Okay, now what's the derivative of this inside function? Well, we have to deal with the square root first, so there will be power rule. So 1 half over the square root x to the 4th plus x cubed times the derivative of this inside now, which is 4x cubed plus x, uh, 3x squared. Okay, now we keep going, and I've run out of whiteboard space, so I'm just going to continue over. And then so we subtract, and we get, well, what's the derivative of this? This is going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared squared times 2 times 1 plus x squared. How did we get that? Well, that's just power rule of this part of the function. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be 2x. Okay, so now we have all this, and we can start to simplify. Well, first off, we're just going to rewrite everything up here, and we get y prime over y is equal to 1 over x to the 4 thirds times 4 thirds x to the 1 third. Well, we can subtract this 1 third from the 4 thirds. What do we get? We get 1. So then we get 4 thirds x plus. So now we can combine this one and this one because they're multiplied together, right? And then so this 2 will come over. So we will have... 4x cubed plus 3x squared on top, and then we have a 2, and then we have, well, this is the square root of x to the 4th plus x cubed times the square root, so then we have x to the 4th plus x cubed squared, right, and there's the square root, so then we can just get rid of the square and the square root because they cancel each other out. So then we have 2 times x to the 4th plus 2 times x cubed. And then we still have, we're still going. We have this minus. And then we have 1 over 1 plus x squared squared times 2, 1 plus x squared. And then we see, okay, this is the same as this one. That means we can get rid of that exponent and we can get rid of that. And then we just multiply this with this. And we get that that is minus 4x over 1 plus x squared. Okay, and it's like, oh, yay, we're done. Well, not yet, because we still have this y prime, and we have this y. But we know what y equals, so we're just going to multiply y on both sides. Cross it out here, cross it out here, multiply by y here. And then we get y prime is equal to 4 over 3x plus 4x cubed plus 3x squared over 2x to the 4th plus 2x cubed minus 4x over 1 plus x squared times y. But what is y? We know y is this 
ugly, disgusting, awful function, and we can just plug y back in. x before plus x cubed, blah, 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 just rewriting, plus 1x squared, all that squared, and we are done. And yes, that took a while, but, you know, doing multiple product, product, hmm. yes, that took a while, but doing multiple product rules and quotient rules would take even longer, and we actually kind of get, like, a nice answer of sorts. Um, so, we are done with this problem. This is how you do logarithmic differentiation. You take ln of both sides, and then you break your big log into small logs that are easier to work with, and then the differentiation will go a lot faster. Alright, so the final thing I'm going to cover in this um, lecture, the lecture portion, is these two limits. They are very important for actually beyond calculus, I'd say. I mean, you, you can use them in calculus, and there are applications, but I, I used them in my 130A and B class, that's probability, for you, those of you who don't know. Um, I used it in both of those classes, and they're just nice little properties. So we have our number, well, it's a letter E, but it's our number E, uh, approximately 2.718, um, yeah, no. Um, but we have that e is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x to the 1 over x. And we have that e is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, the, of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. Um, and basically what this is saying is just as x gets really small and you have x in these parts, it equals e, right? That's our limit. We know what limits are. We've already gone over this. And same thing, except, you know, this is kind of the reverse, right? Because here we have x, 1 over x, and x goes to 0. Here we have n goes to infinity, and we have 1 over n, n to the nth power. So that is all I wanted to cover for the lecture portion of the video. Let's transition into the practice problems. So for our practice problems, we're just going to be doing 2 and 15. I'm not going to do another logarithmic differentiation because that took a very long time and I feel like I did a hard enough one so that it, you'll be able to do the easier ones. Um, Alright, so let's start. Well, what do we have here? x ln x minus x. Okay, so we know it's an easy product rule and then we just subtract x. Well, derivative of x, which is 1. Um, yeah. So, let's do it. So, derivative of this is d dx of f of x is equal to d dx of x ln x minus d dx of x. And we're just going to start with the easy one, that's 1. And then we have that's equal to x, uh, derivative of x ln x. So, Product rule, first d last, x times, what's the derivative of ln x? 1 over x. And then we have last d first, which is equal to plus last ln x. d first, derivative of x is 1 times 1. So then what do we get? We get this is equal to x over x plus ln x minus 1. Well, x over x is just 1, right? So then we have 1 plus ln x minus 1, and this is just equal to ln of x. All right, so that one's, you know, pretty simple. Now we have number 15. We have f, f of s is equal to ln of ln of s. All right, let's start. D, dx, uh, d, ds. We're differentiating with respect to s, not x this time. Um, of f of s is equal to d, d ds of ln ln of x, ln ln of s. All right, so then we start, and so we just chain rule. So we know it's 1 over ln of s 
times the derivative of ln of s, which is 1 over s, times the derivative of s, which is just 1. So then we get this is equal to 1 over ln of s. We get it is equal to 1 over s times ln of s. So that is all the problems I wanted to cover today. Um, again, my name was Logan. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Subscribe. Um, this is not sponsored, of course, because my channel has like 20 subs, but buy these. And Guayaki, sponsor me. I drink these every day.